In this video, we're going to dive into Iman Gotz's editing style by recreating one of his eye-catching title sequences. These animations are found countless times throughout his videos and are a powerful tool to help keep your content structured. I'll walk you through the exact techniques and methods used to edit his videos. And by the end of this tutorial, you will be able to recreate and apply these to your own projects. Let's get started. All right, let's begin by creating a new composition called title. Set the resolution to 1920 by 1080 and the frame rate to 30. We can do a duration of around 10 seconds. Create a new solid. I'll name it background. Now add the gradient ramp effect. Set the start color to a dark red and the end color to a bold red. Now create another solid layer called grid lines and apply the grid effect. Change the size from dropdown to width slider and then set the width to 140. I'll also change the border to 3. We want to add a curved fade towards the bottom of this grid, so we'll mask it with the ellipse tool. First pre-compose this layer and name it grid. Then select the ellipse tool and then double click it to create a mask in the middle of the composition. Now we can adjust the shape slightly so we get our desired effect. That looks good to me. Now open up the mask settings and set the feather to 250. Press T on your keyboard to open up the layer opacity control and lower it to 15%. That's the background done. Now let's get started on the text element. Press the text tool and add in your text. I'll be using Montserrat and alternating between regular and bold for each word. Adjust it into position. Don't worry if it's not perfect because we'll fix it up later. I've set the font size to 74 pixels and the kerning to about minus 30. Apply a glow effect and set the radius to 30 and the intensity to 0.5. Now let's add in our number. For this text, I'll be using Helvetica Bold at about 140 pixels. Select the ellipse tool and set the fill to none and the stroke to 8 pixels. We will draw a ring around the number. I'll manually change the size to 190 by 190. Select both the number and the ring and use the align tool to make sure they're centered. Then drag it back beside the text and get it into position. Alright, and let's just rename this layer to ring. Okay, now let's add in the text box. Select the rectangle tool and create a rectangle. Make sure to set a color for the fill and that there's no stroke. In the properties tab, unlink the scale and set the size to 1550 by 310. And we can set the roundness to about 60. I'll actually change the color from white so that we can see the text. Now let's just drag it under the text so we can actually see it. Use the align tool to center the rectangle. And adjust the text elements if you need to. I'll just move these over a little. Change the name of the layer to shape fill. Now that we've got the general shape, we can start styling the box. Press Command or Control D to duplicate the rectangle shape and rename it to shape outline. We can remove the fill from this shape and add a white stroke with a thickness of 3 pixels. Set the layer opacity to 60%. Now let's add a glow with a radius of 50 and intensity of 0.5. Copy and paste this glow to the number and ring too. On the shape fill layer, add a gradient ramp. I'll pick the colors for it from the background. This will give some depth to our design. Adjust the color positions till it looks just right. Now from the top menu, add an inner glow. Open up the inner glow settings and set the blend mode to none. Change the color to white and then we will set the size to 80. Now let's just lower the opacity to 10. Now let's add in the lines. 
Select the pen tool and set the stroke to 8 pixels. Draw a line at the bottom, slightly curved. And rename this layer to line 1. Let's turn this into a dashed line. Open up the layer settings and press the plus beside the dashes. Set the dash to 22. Now let's make a second line at the top. Copy the settings from the first line and paste it onto the second. You've got to open the layer settings and paste it directly over the stroke. And now rename this layer to line 2. We can add some more lines to the background. I'll add one on the top right and one on the left. We should still have the stroke settings in our clipboard. So we can open up the layers and paste them onto the new lines. For the left line, I'll change the dash to 14. Press U to close the layers up so our timeline looks a bit more neater. Now select both the layers and press T to open up the opacity and lower it to about 7. Rename the layers we just created so we can stay organised. And then drag all these down above the grid layer. That's our design done for now, we can finally start animating. If you're finding this video helpful so far, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. I'll also have the project file up in the discord community for those of you who want it. Ok, now let's start animating the number. Select the number layer and then hold control and double click the anchor point tool to set it in the middle of the number. Now press R to open up the rotation controls and rotate it sideways. Something like that is good. Then, at the start of the timeline, set a keyframe for the rotation. Go to 1 second 20 frames and change the rotation to 0. This looks ok but we can make it even better with Easy Ease. Easy Ease will make our keyframes feel so much smoother. Highlight the keyframes, right click and then select Easy Ease. We can go into the graft editor and adjust the curves. I'll drag in both points. Now let's add in a fast box blur to the number. Change the blur amount to 5 and set a keyframe at the start. Then at 10 frames, change the blur amount to 0. Now we have a smooth blur animation as the number comes in. Let's animate the ring now. Open up the layer settings and press the arrow besides add and apply a trims path effect. This will allow us to animate the way the stroke transitions in. Drag your timeline to the start and set the keyframes offset to minus 90. And we can keyframe the end and set it to 0. Then at 1 second 20 frames we can set the offset to 0 and the end to 100. We can apply easy ease again to these keyframes and drag in both points. That's our number animation done. Let's work on the text. Select the text layer and open up the text controls. Press the arrow besides animator and add the opacity, scale, rotation and blur effects. Drag your timeline to the start and set the scale to 70, the rotation to about 10 and the blur to 15, the opacity to 0 then open up the range selector and set the keyframes for the start and the offset. Drag the offset value to minus 100%, then go to 2 seconds and set the start to 100 and the offset to 0. Open up the advanced tab and change the based on drop down to characters excluding space and the shape to ramp up. Now let's select our keyframes and easy ease them. I'm going to drag the left side in a little so it starts slow and then speeds up. Let's just adjust that a little more. Perfect. Now we can move this layer 10 frames so it comes in after the number. And that's the text animation done. We can start working on the text box. Pre-compose the text and the box layers 
and name it textbox and make this layer 3D. Go to the start of the timeline and press R to open up the rotation controls. Keyframe the X rotation and set it to minus 90. Now let's also keyframe the Y rotation and move it slightly to around minus 3. Then we can go to 1 second and set them both to 0. Easy ease the keyframes and then go into the graph editor and drag in the sides a little. And now we've got this cool flip up animation. Let's animate the opacity and the scale now. Go to the start and press T. Keyframe the opacity and set it to 0. Then press S to open up the scale settings and set that to 70%. Go 20 frames ahead and make the opacity 100%. Then we can go to 2 seconds and 20 frames and set the scale to 100%. Highlight the scale keyframes and easy ease them. Now we can open the graph editor and adjust these curves. I will drag the left one about 90% and the right one about 80. Let's just adjust that a little more. Finally, let's shift this animation over 10 frames so it comes in a little later. And that is our text box animation complete. We still have these lines to sort out. Let's select our first line layer and open it up. Add a trims path effect. Keyframe the end at zero. And then move to one second, 10 frames and set the end to hundred. Easy ease these keyframes. And once again, in the graph editor, drag the left to about 80. Copy this trim's path effect to the other line. You will need to open up the layer and paste it directly on the stroke. My keyframes are a bit far forward so I'm going to just drag them to the start. Now add a turbulent displace effect. Set the amount to 20 and the size to 50. Keyframe the evolutions at the start of the timeline. And then at 5 seconds, make it complete a single rotation. Now, copy this effect onto the other shape. Now we've got a bit of animation on the lines, but we also want to link them to the scale of the text box. Move your timeline after the text box animation is complete. And select both of the line layers. By using this whip icon, we can drag it onto the text box layer. This will set the text box as the parent to these two layers so it will follow along with the scale animation. Move the first line layer to 1 second and the second to 110. That looks great. We can also add the trims path effect to these background lines. Add the effect and keyframe the end to 0 at the start. And then move about 20 frames and set the end to 100. Easy ease the keyframes and then copy it over to the other line shape. Move the right line layer to 20 frames and the left line layer to 2 seconds. We're almost there. We've still got the background and a few effects at the end to really give it that Iman Gatsi look. Pre-compose all of the background elements into one composition. Now press S to open up the scale controls. Keyframe the scale at the start of the timeline at 130%. Then at 1 second, set the scale to 101. I'm doing 101 instead of 100 because when we add the turbulent displace effect later, it will distort the sides a little. Then at 2 seconds 10 frames, set the scale to 120. Easy ease these keyframes. We'll need to adjust these curves to make it a lot smoother. Drag the first point to about 57%, the second to 62 on either side, and the right to 57. And now our animation looks almost complete. We still have the finishing touches which will completely transform these graphics. First create an adjustment layer, 
Then add the posterized time effect and set it to 15. This effect will mimic a lower frame rate and create that signature lag effect. Then add a turbulent displace effect. Set the amount to 10 and the size to 12. Keyframe the evolution at the start. And then go to the end of your clip, I'd say about 6 seconds. And rotate the evolution 3 times. Now we have a bit more movement in our elements. Finally, add some noise. I'll do about 5%. And there you have it. A title sequence in the style of Iman Gatsi. I'll have this project file linked in the description if you want to check it out. If you found this video helpful, then be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.